Greetings everyone, TJB Chris here, and welcome to part three of the Model 16B restoration. So in the last two parts, we kind of went over the machine, I cleaned it up a bit, and I redid the keyboard, which uh, went pretty well, although I would rather desolder the ALP switches on a Model 4 and have to take those apart and clean them out than do those foam ones again. Those Keytronic foam things are a pain in the butt to click in, but it came out good, it tested out well on the Model 12 here, so we're all good with that. So now what we're going to do is this power supply, as I covered in the first video, has some cracks in the reefer caps and they will just become fodder for copious amounts of smoke. So we're just going to replace them now. So I had two of the different caps floating around already from other power supplies, uh, but I did not have another pair of them. So I got one from DigiKey and one from Mouser. They're all here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull this apart. I'm going to dust it off a bit and we're going to get the new caps put in. And hopefully once all that's together, we'll clean up some of the other boards. I might pull the chassis over here on the floor. We might pull him back up, clean up the motherboard with my ESD safe brush, and I might go over uh, the video card too. Just make sure they're all clean. And then if things look good, and I don't see anything concerning in there, maybe we'll do a power-up test and see if the thing will actually get us an insert diskette prompt. That would be very, very good if that happens. but. We're a little bit from that yet, so let's get cracking on this power supply. So here's a power supply. I'm going to move these caps off to the side for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our ESD brush and we're just going to see if we can clean this up a bit. I'm not going to go crazy. with that. Like I say, it's not perfect. There will be more of this, but I just wanted to get it so I wouldn't just get myself completely covered in crap while I was working on this. So the next step is we're going to remove this from the framing here. And uh, actually this, there's kind of two pieces here, so um, this heat sink will disconnect from here. I just have to remember that this ground is here. And then there's a couple of screws that hold this onto the back here. And we'll get this off and that should be it. Here we are separated from the chassis, the mounting plate right here. Just going to put that off to the side where it was. And uh, well, as I'm handling this, I just have to be careful not to put too much weight here, not to flex this. I just have to be careful. I didn't actually have to take this ground off, it turns out, but whatever. Um, so we can see the caps I have here, there are five total. This guy here, two, three, four, five. And so there's 2.1 microfarad, I'm sorry, there's two 2200 picofarad, there's 1.01. 1.1 and 1.22 microfarad capacitors. So a total of five. And what we're gonna do is warm up the iron and get these out and the new ones in. Alrighty, let's see if the desoldering iron is warm enough yet. I have both in case I need them, but I'm hoping that I can use the pump. Ooh, that one did good. Perfect. So there we are, new caps in place. Um, you can see that they've changed the, you know, which power of the units they're, they're referring to these on these, but this is the 0.01 microfarad, 0.1, 0.22 uh, microfarad reefer caps, and then these are the two 2200 uh, picofarad caps. So now that these are back together, I'm gonna put this ground wire that I didn't have to take off back in. We're gonna reattach this to the chassis and we'll move on to the boards.
So there we are. Got the screws back in, chassis back on, ready to go. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to clean this up a bit. We're going to get the 16 back up here, and we're going to take the top of the card cage off, and we're going to see what needs to be done with that. So that's what's next. All right. 16B is back. Um, still going to try and not take apart this terminal block. We'll see how I do. Um, all I really want to do here is I'm going to pull the card cage off, and I just want to take a closer look at the board, maybe pull these ribbon cables up, and I want to go over it with the brush here and the can of air. And the hope here is just that with the CSD safe brush I can just get any gunk out of there. There's not really too much. And I want to really just use the opportunity to make sure there's nothing out of whack here. There's no components touching, no shorted out caps or bent test tips or anything else like that. And then if it looks good, I think we're going to try and power it up sans floppy drive and see what happens. So there's the card cage off. Um, we've got everything kind of out. There's just a bunch of screws around here, so I'm going to drop this. It's actually pretty clean. Um, not much to really mess with here. I'm just going to leave this off to the side for now, and we're going to take a closer look at this board after I get these cables up. So here it is, the Model 16B motherboard. And I should really say it's, it's the 12 and 16B motherboard. I'm pretty sure it's the same board. Uh, you can see here the RAM is not populated for the extra RAM. This would be the extra 16K in a Model 12 to give it 80K and allow it to run Tristos 4.2. So without that extra memory, it won't run. And Model 12s, without the hard drive controller or without 68,000 memory to grab a segment from, won't have enough RAM and will just freeze on startup. The Model 16B and should have a hard disk adapter or 68,000 memory board are both in it and the extra 16K can be mapped in. So just in kind of looking at this right now, I'm not seeing a whole lot that's really concerning me too much. The board is in pretty good shape. I'm going to take the brush to it real quick in the can of air and just kind of give it a once over and then I think we're going to think about putting this back together and seeing if we can do a test here and I'll take a closer look and make sure there's no bent tips or anything. Got all these jumpers should be intact and we'll see what happens there. So. Let's uh, take a little brush to this, and then we'll see what it looks like when we're done. All right, so back at the board again. Um, nothing too crazy standing out. Um, I did have some residue uh, that I got off for the most part. Like I said, I'm not doing too crazy on here. I think. We're in pretty good shape. I don't see any corrosion or anything in here that, that has me concerned that I'm going to have to pop these. But if I do have issues, I'll pull the cage back out and we'll take a look. Okay, so we're back together now. Got the power supply in there. I accidentally reversed a couple of screws, but I figured it out. Everything else is in. We still got a little more to do in terms of just getting uh, the power stuff reconnected. I have to get the top over here. Bam, we're going to take a quick look at the video card before I do that. So next up, we're just going to take a quick look at the video card, make sure it's all copacetic, no issues with it, no bent pins or anything like that. And uh, if that all checks out, we'll try this puppy out. So this is the video card in the Model 16B and it's pretty clean, it's in pretty good shape. I mean it was in the card cage so you know it's actually not as dusty as I would have expected. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go over this with a brush real quick and make sure there's nothing bent or you know otherwise going to touch something else and I think that's going to be a moment of truth thing. Um, 
and I think we're going to plug this in and try it out. Now we're going to try it without the floppy drive connected. Um, that's going to be a whole nother, a whole nother thing. But if I can get the insert disk get prompt, that's going to be a very good thing. All right, we're going to slide this in. I'm just going to pick the closest slot to the bottom. This actually won't be where this goes when all the cards are in here. But that is where it's going to go for now. I do have a ground wire here. Slide this back. Alright, we're going to connect this. And the reason we're going to do this is because I need a place to ground this. So this is going to go on for grounding purposes. this to be properly grounded. Okay. Okay, so all right floppy drive is disconnected. I have the power and the data cable disconnected. Video card is in and connected and grounded. The CRT driver board looks to be in good shape, is connected. I did put the soundboard back in. I didn't actually, um, I didn't actually uh, film that because I realized it was out, and I figured, what the heck, put it in. So first things first. All right. Well, the power is plugged in, and that is a live power strip. So we're going to go around to the other side, and we're going to see what happens. Back around to the front. Moment of truth. I haven't powered this on before, so we'll see what it's going to do. Hopefully it is functional. Um, I guess uh, just wash my fingers in here. There's mains voltage right here. What power light? That's good. The fan's spinning. Ooh, look at this. We have insert diskette. Now, uh, like I mentioned, floppy drive not connected. That's kind of by design here. We'll come back to that in the next video. But I just really wanted to make sure that from a Z80 standpoint, this thing was working. I see the screen's powered up. I'm going to try and reach in here without jolting myself. The controls actually seem pretty smooth. The display is clear. Um, this is a little squat, so I'm going to have to adjust the vertical size, which is not too difficult. I'll do that. I'll just take a little bit of finagling with a screwdriver while it's running, and I can stretch that out. I had to do the same thing on my Model 12, actually. I had to use as much of the display as possible. But at this point, at least it passes enough of the basic diagnostic to get to the insert diskette prompt. So that means for part four, what we'll do is we'll probably take a look at the floppy drive. I don't have any 8-inch disks, so uh, we'll probably just get some rails and things lubricated, but I'm not going to put it into service quite yet. Uh, what I will also do is I've got together one of these uh, NF6X 50-34 uh, to 34 pin floppy drive adapters. Um, I bought three back when I bought my Model 16A. Because when you order from Osh Park, you got to get three. And I got the parts to stuff it, so we'll stuff those, plug a floppy emulator in, and see if it passes enough of the boot up tests to boot Tristas. Um, if it does, then we'll do the diagnostics. I think for that to work, I'm going to have to put the hard disk card in to get the extra 16K of RAM so that Tristas 2 will boot. Otherwise, it will fail um, because this machine is configured as all 16B should be um, and does not have the extra 16K on the mainboard. So. Anyway, that's that. The machine is at least doing a basic power-up. If that all checks out and the Z80 subsystems check out, we will move on to the 68,000 side of things. So that's it. We have a, a working machine, or at least a, a baseline working machine. This is very exciting. There's a lot of hope for this machine, and I'm, I'm really excited. So thank you for joining me, and until part four, stay classy.